Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of This Week in Magic Online Finance. My name is Chaz Andres, and I'm out of town this week, so there aren't going to be any movers and shakers, there's no sneak of the week, you're not going to get to see my cat. Sorry about that, but please do stick with us, because the topic I'm going to cover today is something that I've wanted to talk about in detail on this channel for a while now, and I'm glad that I finally have the opportunity. Today, we're going to talk in depth about Set Redemption. Now, Set Redemption actually has a pretty interesting history. See, back when Magic Online was first released, Wizards of the Coast had a conundrum. They had to find a way to get players to spend real money on a collection of pixels. See, the idea of spending $4 on a pack of something tangible, you know, physical magic cards, that was easy enough, but would players spend the same amount of money on cards they didn't technically own and just sort of existed on the cloud somewhere? This was before the era of loot boxes, as crazy as that sounds, and there was no real reason for them to think that their business model would work at all. Set Redemption was their solution, and by and large it was a good one. By letting players know that they could always redeem their digital cards for physical cards, it linked those two economies together and it made it so that they could grow in tandem. And whenever there was some sort of crazy MTGO market panic, the prices for digital cards never went all the way to zero, because if they had, players could just, you know, cash them out and sell their physical cards on eBay or whatever. It linked the MTGO economy to the overall magic economy in a way that felt organic and said, look, we've got your back with these digital cards. I know you don't feel like you own them, but you do. See, they're paper cards that maybe you just haven't cashed out yet, and you can at any time. And the philosophy that wants to use to develop set redemption is actually a very old economic trick. For example, back in the early days of the US government, there was this thing called the gold standard. The idea of the gold standard is pretty simple. For each dollar that the US government printed, they had to have a dollar's worth of gold in the treasury. The idea being, hey, we've got this piece of paper that we can sort of weigh around and spend, but it's backed up by something that we all agree is worth something. It's backed up by something tangible and that worked for a very long time. At this point, we're long past the gold standard, but that's because, you know, we don't really need it anymore. We all basically agree that dollars are worth something. Most people in the world agree that, therefore dollars are worth something. And this is, you know, similar in the way that these analogies are to modern cards on MTGO, right? Modern cards aren't backed up by set redemption anymore, but we all more or less agree that they're worth something, which is why you can have 60, 70 ticket modern rares. And in a roundabout sort of way, this brings me to the most common question I get asked about set redemption, which is, is it about to end? Is this a gold standard type of situation where WotC needed this thing in the early days of the MTGO economy, but you know, now things are stable and the MTGO economy is kicking along and maybe we don't need set redemption anymore. After all, it must be kind of a hassle to print and mail out a bunch of complete sets and why can't they just, you know, get rid of it tomorrow? Now, back in 2016, when WotC significantly shortened the set redemption window, I was definitely in the camp of people who believed that its days were numbered. I really thought that we'd see the announcement of the end of Set Redemption long before now. At this point though, my tune has changed pretty significantly, and that's because of the same thing that's changed pretty much everything having to do with Magic in the year 2019, which is Arena. Now that a lot of standard play has moved over to Arena, standard prices on MTGO are down precipitously. You can see it in the indexes. People are buying less cards, they're buying less standard packs over here on MTGO. And one of the only things keeping prices high and standard right now, set redemption. So if WotC were to cut set redemption at this point, prices in standard would drop precipitously, and that includes pack sales. So they wouldn't be smart to do it. And at this point, I think Set Redemption is here to stay. So how do we take advantage of this? Well, as I've mentioned in several of my videos so far, one of the quirks of Set Redemption is it means that some cards in the current set, any set currently eligible for redemption, have to be expensive. They have to be. Even if that demand doesn't come from people clamoring to play the cards in standard on Magic Online, it'll come from dealers, people who want to redeem these sets. At the very least, it'll be large storefronts like Channel Fireball and Star City Games buying up thousands and thousands of cards on MTGO and redeeming the sets and using them to fulfill orders in paper. So. That leads to situations like Seraph of the Scales, which right now is an 8 ticket rare on MTGO. Do you think that card is 8 tickets because people want to play it in standard on MTGO? 
I don't think so. I think it's because of set redemption. And whether you believe my assertions or not, we can actually go back to the data and take a look at this stuff. For example, let's talk about Corset 2019. Corset 2019 actually had a really, really stable price for a really long time. From August of 2018 all the way through the end of December, Corset 2019 was between 70 and 80 tickets on Magic Online. A set of that set did not drop below 70, and it did not increase above 80. It stayed in that window through the crash, through everything. Then, the set redemption window ended in January, and Corset 2019 began to crash hard. At this point, you can buy an entire set of Corset 2019 for 18 tickets. 18 tickets were a complete set, and this is still a standard legal set, mind you. This set hasn't rotated yet, but is almost an 80% drop. And this is far from an isolated incident. For example, we can see a similar thing happen with Dominaria. Dominaria was very stable between 90 and 120 tickets from May all the way through November of 2018. Then the set redemption period ended. Now you can buy an entire set of Dominaria for 30 tickets, which is less than a third of the price that the set was worth back when Redemption was still a thing. And that, of course, brings us to Guilds of Ravnica. Guilds of Ravnica is currently cruising along in the 100 to 120 ticket range, not really dropping below 100, not really increasing above 120, but the Redemption Guarantee period ended back in late February. People aren't worrying, there's still sets in stock, you can redeem it as of the recording of this video, but that is going to end at some point, no later than May the 8th, which is the redemption cutoff date. And at that point, or possibly a little bit earlier, Guilds of Ravnica is going to crash and crash hard. Now, as I researched for this video, the thing that really, really struck me was just how stable these sets are during the redemption period. For example, Ravnica Allegiance has been almost bizarrely stable over the past few months. It really hasn't ever gone below 110 tickets, it really has never gone above 120, it's been sort of sitting in that range. And that is despite a lot of major single card spikes and crashes over that period. Hydroid Crisis went way up and has come way down, and Kai has gone way up, and it doesn't matter. This set has been really, really stable in that 110 to 120 ticket range. And what that tells me is that set redemption is the main driver of standard prices on MTGO and nothing else is close because that is the price that is stable. Cards are going up and down in price. It doesn't matter when you look at the entire big picture for the set because that is where the value is coming from at the moment. And this all leads me to kind of an interesting conclusion. See, you know how Arclight Phoenix is super expensive right now, and I thought it was mostly because of how much play it sees in Modern? Well, maybe that price is tied closer to Set Redemption than we thought. See, if these sets would be, you know, 20 to 30 tickets without Redemption instead of the 100 to 120 that they're at with Redemption, well, that's 70 to 80 tickets of spare value that has to go somewhere. So in sets like Ravnica Allegiance, the value gets spread around a bit. 20 tickets here, 15 tickets there, and cards that people want a little bit. But in Guilds of Ravnica, the card that everybody wants is Arclight Phoenix. So maybe it makes sense that almost all of that surplus value has gone right into Arclight Phoenix, the card that by far has the highest level of demand. If that's true, it means that a lot of Arclight Phoenix's crazy price tag right now is due to set redemption. And what that means is that even though that Arclight Phoenix is an incredibly good card in modern, it's a card that people want, it's very, very possible the price is going to tank and tank really, really hard once the set redemption window ends for Guilds of Ravnica. At the very least, this is a card that I am much less likely to hold on to now than I was before I looked into all of this stuff. And honestly, I'd recommend selling it just in case this happens. But let's end today on a silver lining. The last thing I want to cover is the idea that set redemption is a thing that you should be doing, and if you haven't done it yet, you should look into it because it can be a nice way to make a little extra cash. When is redemption worth it? Well, that depends a lot on the price of a set at any given moment. For example, right now a set of Ravnica Allegiance sells for about 115 tickets on MTGO. The additional redemption costs, at least for people living in the US, is $33. That comes to a total of $148 for a set of Ravnica Legions delivered to your door, which is roughly equivalent to what the set's selling for on eBay right now. That doesn't mean that set redemption isn't worth it, though. For example, you can often buy MTGO event tickets for about $0.90 cents on the dollar, which would shave another $10 or so off the purchase price. 
or maybe you just have some extra ticks kicking around after a successful spec, or maybe you've got Kaya and Hydroid Krasis lying around from a really successful draft or a really nice treasure chest, and you can cut half the price of a set off that way. And even then, complete sets are usually one of the more cost-efficient ways to buy magic cards. For example, according to MTG Goldfish, the current value of a complete set of Ravnica Allegiance is $240, and that's about $100 more than the price of a redeemed set. Granted, this is because most people aren't interested in paying full retail for every single card in a given magic set, which is why you're getting about a $100 discount. But if you're the sort of person who likes to maintain a large and robust standard collection, this might be the way to go. I've done this myself. I've spent thousands of dollars on set redemption over the years, and I've always managed to make money. So yeah, that's why I wanted to talk about set redemption this week. Not only are they the major driver of the MTGO standard economy right now, it can be a great way to make some extra money. And with sets dropping by 70 to 80% once they pass out of set redemption, it is a thing that all MTGO players need to be paying much more attention to than they do right now. In fact, it's probably correct to either redeem or sell all of your Guilds of Ravnica cards right now before the set redemption drop. And that's all I've got for you this week. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey through set redemption. I will see you next Monday morning for another episode of This Week in Magic Online Finance.